What's up, Mike N2MAK? This might be one of the worst antennas I've ever built. Here at Apota Tufer, the Erie Canalway National Heritage Corridor and uh, New York State Empire Trail. Uh, and I got a brand new antenna that I just made this morning. I wanna get on the air. Let's get it set up and uh, check it out. All right, let's take a quick look at the setup here. So this is what's referred to as a no counter poise antenna. And what we have here is the LDG four to one on, on the green infinity stone. <laughs> And uh, I just did this quick and dirty. Uh, didn't solder, crimp anything on. And so the speaker wires connected. This is really thin 22 gauge speaker wire. Uh, I didn't have enough of the uh, 16 gauge. Uh, so that's going up all the way to the top of the mast. Uh, what this is, is there's 20 feet of the speaker wire together, but then the last 10 feet are split off. So here's what I'm talking about. Um, this goes up 20 feet. So this is the 20 foot point right here. And then I just removed one end of the speaker wire. So it's just the single wire for the last 10 feet. Since this is a random wire antenna, I'm sure there's gonna be lots of common mode. Got the LDG one-to-one -one choke and then it's 15 feet of coax going into the car, and it's hooked up to the ICOM 7300. Kilowatt Charlie 5, November, Golf X-Ray. Oh, roger, roger, uh, you're about 5.9 five, nine, or 5.9 five, nine into Waco, Texas, booming signal. Roger, roger, thanks for the signal report. You're the first contact on this antenna. I just made it. It's, it's, uh, it's a speaker wire um, fed with a 4 to 1, and uh, it's pretty much just a random wire. Uh, without a counterpoise that uh, I'm, I'm trying out today. It's working great for you. The, the LDG, is that a LDG balance? Yeah, it's using the LDG 4 to 1, and they call it a, if you look it up, they call it a no counterpoise antenna. So it's, it's fed with 30 feet of speaker wire going up a mast, and then the speaker wire is, the, the last 10 feet of it is, is split, um, and, and one element is removed, but it's, it's, Twin fed like the whole way up 20 feet, and then the last 10 is just a single wire QSL. I was thinking about ordering one of those LDG four to one, well four to one, one to one, and some others. But anyway, uh, yeah, I've seen a uh, antenna like that, and oh K4OGO, I believe, Salty Walt, and anyway the book. But I'll let you go uh, KC5 NGX. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Walt's one of my friends, and uh, I, 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 we jokingly refer to those LDGs as the Infinity Stones. We, we, I, I have all of them with me here, <laughs> as he does, and, uh, and stuff. And his book was kind of inspiration to try this antenna out. So good to get you in the log. Enjoy the uh, rest of the weekend. Hopefully you got some nice weather down there like we do up here. 7-3 from November 2, Mike Alpha Kilo. Thanks again. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Poda. This is November 2, Mike Alpha Kilo calling CQ for Parks on the Air. Standing by for any stations anywhere. All right, let's just cut right to it. I don't like this antenna. <laughs> I am not happy one bit with how it's performing and, uh, and stuff. So I was out here at the park and it was really convenient. I thought this would be a good time for me to come out and test because here we are, we're in the fall now, 10 meters is opening up good opportunity to get on, make contacts, and try this out on a bunch of different bands. You know my motto, leave no band behind, right? So my son is across the road at the university for basketball camp. Drop him off, come over here, think, set it up, record a quick video, and do a quick activation, spin the VFO, try to get this antenna working on as many bands as I can. And it just didn't go as planned, but... <laughs> Um, you know, it is what it is, right? So let me tell you what I've learned and what my takeaways are uh, from this. So uh, first disappointment was the fact that emergency mode on the ICOM 7300 would not tune this antenna on 40 meters. So right out of the gate, I'm not able to use this on 40 without an external antenna. Um, so that's not good. I like 40 meters. It's important. Uh, I think it's a, not important so much as it's a very useful 
expand in the Northeast where you can definitely make a lot of regional contacts out there. Um, now, it's not a deal breaker, but that's that's not good, <laughs> at least in my book. If I'm making a multi-band random, uh, random wire antenna, I would like it to be able to do 40 meters since I use that band a lot. I was able to tune all the other bands with emergency mode. The only place where the SWR was decent enough that a three to one tuner would work was on 17 meters. And I played there for a little bit, but it just was not getting out even with all 100 watts. Because I used emergency mode, on the other bands, 20, 10, 12, 15, I was limited to uh, 50 watts output, but that increases the uh, range of the tuner. So that was the trade off there. Like I said, I, I made some contacts on a few bands, um, not nearly as many as I wanted or needed <laughs> to get the park activated, but I was able to at least kind of take the pulse of this antenna, in my opinion, and. Like I said, I just didn't have a good feel for it. I, I don't think I was getting out there that well. And I don't think it was receiving that well as either. It seemed like a lot of the signals I was picking up were faint and whatnot. Um, again, this is all, it's not, this is qualitative, not quantitative. <laughs> or this is, you know, very subjective <laughs> testing. Um, if you would like me to see, or if you would like to see me put this antenna on Whisper and do some more testings, definitely leave a comment down below and, uh, and maybe I'll give that a shot when I have some more time. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I wanted to kind of race to get this done because uh, the Salty Wall Antenna Challenge for the Ham Radio Kids Table is coming up. It's due in like two days. <laughs> and uh, I figured this would be a fun little entry, something that I didn't see in Walt's uh, book. Um, but, uh, I, I've read a little bit about it online. I was kind of intrigued by it. The idea of a no counterpoise antenna um, is interesting. Uh, anything that I can do for parks on the air to minimize my my setup space uh, can be beneficial. Certain parks, this is not one of them, but I've been to certain parks or areas where I'm, I'm confined to just a parking spot and I don't have room to put out um, a radial net or uh, long counter poises and stuff. So I figured give it a shot. Like I like to say, RF around and find out. Um, and in this case, I found out this antenna is probably not the one for me. Um, you switch this out for the red nine to one, put up a 29 foot wire, pretty much the same length as this antenna, um, but just with a single wire, not, not, not both speaker wires. And uh, then you got a 29 foot random wire, which I've used to great success. Uh, small counterpoise on that, and uh, you can usually work anything from 40 down to six. Yes, you're gonna need a tuner, um, but I've had much more success with that <laughs> than with this thing so far. I know I'm just getting started and maybe I'm being a little hard on it, but um, it is what it is. So um, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see more of this, including like some whisper testing, maybe some QRP. Um, let me know and maybe I'll give it a shot. I'll add it to the to-do list. If you've used a no counterpoise antenna like this or some of the different variations, um, let me know in the comments down below too, because maybe it's something I might explore for myself. Uh, I'll leave links in the description down below uh, with some of the resources that I use to learn about this antenna. And there's a couple variations. Like I said, I did one that was 30 feet long with uh, 10 feet of wire chopped off. But um, there's some different variations. And, and if you're interested and want to learn more, those will be down below for a, for a reference. Uh, and lastly, shout out to Walt, Salty Walt, K4 OGO. Um, I'm, I've been a huge fan of Walt's channel since the very beginning. Uh, he and I are, are, are friends and I've learned a lot from him. And I appreciate you, Walt, for doing all that you do to encourage others to get out there and RF around, find out, try different antennas, don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to fail. That's how we learn and that's how we have fun. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please click like, subscribe to my channel. I'm Mike, N2MAK73.